Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. We got some breaking news this morning. More Biden classified documents. A lot of questions here. Very uncomfortable for him. Uh, Trump, of course, celebrating the latest developments. So we'll bring that to you. We also have the latest in terms of that massive airline FAA failure yesterday. Grounded flights for a while. What exactly happened? Who exactly is to blame? Mm. Talk about that. Uh, also, Questions on our support for Ukraine coming from a surprising place. Military leaders starting to raise questions about how much we are shipping them and what it might mean for our own national security. We also have some updates on my favorite member of Congress, Mr. George Santos. Um, some new lies being revealed, some sort of like amusing ones. This guy is just, he just never stops. Um, also some of his fellow New York Republicans calling on him to resign, but he is holding fast. He is not interested in leaving. So we will bring you all of those updates. We also have uh, oral arguments in a big case in front of the Supreme Court this week that could crush workers' right to strike. And uh, some interesting commentary from our friends over at The View on Katie Porter's announcement for Senate. Richard Wolf, Professor Richard Wolf, will be back on the show previewing the uh, economy for the year. Sagar is looking at childhood obesity, and I am looking at which professions make people the happiest and which make them the most miserable. Mm. But before we get to any of that, Sagar. Live show. Put it up there on the screen. February 3rd, you guys know the drill at this point. Paramount Theater, Austin, Texas, we have a great show planned for all of you and the tickets are selling very, very well. Last chance probably to see us for at least for a little while uh, before we go ahead and pause the tour and go back eventually. So this is the last chance, guys. There's tickets who are widely available. Reminder to the Lifetime members, if you go ahead and buy a ticket, we will fully reimburse the cost and you'll be able to participate in the meet and greet. But with that, let's get to the breaking news that happened just last night. Let's put it up there on the screen, guys. Uh, President Biden, Turns out even more classified documents were found in a second location uh, for hoarding classified documents in President Biden's office. This was at a, quote, second location associated with Mr. Biden. Uh, we haven't exactly been told what that second location is. The previous one were some documents that were actually found by President Biden's lawyers before the midterms at the Penn Biden Center, which is kind of like a think tank, which he had put his name on and eventually had been paid nearly a million dollars a year to, to preside over, <laughs> basically put his name um, on the front of the building. So what are these documents? Well, we don't really know a whole lot. Uh, as some people are saying, we actually don't even know the entire number. Uh, I was actually listening to Joe Rogan yesterday and he said, nearly 10, come on. He's like, you know, you can't say nearly, nearly 10. 10. Uh, it's either 10 or 11 or 12. Like, you know the exact number, <laughs> just say the number. In terms of what uh, was in the documents, by the way, is a little bit of a difficulty. It's uh, because it's almost exactly mirror to the same accusation against President Trump. They are sensitive intelligence memos and briefing materials concerning Ukraine, Iran, and the UK. So Ukraine in particular uh, raises a lot of flags, not only over what's happening there. We should all remember President Biden was actually the basically point person by the Obama administration in the anti-corruption moves on Ukraine. This is why the entire Hunter Biden Burisma payments really mattered is because Biden himself was probably the foremost authority and uh, under over Ukraine while he was in the Obama Biden right, administration. True. Iran and the UK, I mean, I guess UK doesn't particularly matter, but Iran is the same one where I believe in the Trump documents, aside from the North Korea documents, one of the nuclear powers uh, that they had said, you know, we'll remember they said, oh, it contains nuclear material. It was actually intelligence regarding Iran. So lots of questions also about what exactly was in the document. It raises the even more so, I guess, pervasive problem of how many classified documents are these people all holding on to? How hard yeah. is it to just not do this? Uh, it, why? <laughs> like, why are you entitled to your briefing and intelligence memos from when you were the vice president to be held? You know, another key point is that President Biden doesn't even have the smokescreen that Trump has, which is Trump at least was the commander in chief. And, you know, technically, if he had gone through the process, could have declassified the documents if he want. The vice that's president true. has no declassification yeah, that's true. authority. So he just straight up grabbed uh, classified. I, again, was it him? Was it his staff? I don't know. But it, clearly there was a sloppy process that was all going on there. But this is tremendously embarrassing for the Biden administration. Oh, absolutely. Crystal, and you pointed out aptly, the more you read about the timeline, <laughs> it is very clear these people knew about this before the midterm elections. And it's January 12th, and we're only learning about it now. Yes. Why? I think well, we you know all why. know the answer to yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would have looked really bad. And yes. A big distraction before the midterms. And so they managed to keep it quiet until now when they think they can sort of like weather the storm and get through it. Right. I mean, there's a lot to say about this. Number one, I do have to say, 
I was listening to CNN on my way oh, in God. last night Bless to the you. city, and um, I wanted to hear the way that they were handling uh -huh. all of this, and it really was kind of hilarious. Because, listen, it is true, Trump seems to have gone to greater lengths to cover up his documents, and that may ultimately be what gets him in the uh -huh. most trouble. Like, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up, that sort of thing. But the, the pains that they went to, <laughs> to preface literally every sentence they said with, this is way different from Trump and it's nothing <laughs> like what Trump did. And it's like, you know, also, how do you have so much confidence in that? Because yes, we still don't right. know a lot of details. Um, you know, we are still learning, especially with the second batch of documents, we are still learning. We don't even know where they were found. We don't know why they were brought there. We don't know the details of what level of classification. We don't frankly know whether there was some sort of cover. I mean, there appears to have been a like temporary cover up yeah, to keep the American people from knowing before the midterm elections. So anyway, it was amusing to watch them go to such great lengths to insist this is totally different from Trump. It has nothing to do with Trump. The other piece of this is, what does it mean for Trump? Because, listen, the way the justice system should work is it shouldn't really matter that there's this other thing going on with another dude, with the, another president. It shouldn't really make a difference for Trump's case. But the DOJ, they, these are, especially the people at the top, these are fundamentally political actors. And the biggest question has always been whether they would be willing to take the political risk in order to indict Donald Trump. And this makes things more challenging for them. And Trump knows that. I mean, he's out there actively celebrating. I mean, they are delighted in this uh, turn of events. So, you know, where I was previously extremely confident that Trump would be indicted by the Justice Department, probably uh, for this exact reason, because the obstruction charge seems so sort of clear and they have him sort of dead to rights, this makes their case a little bit more challenging. Of course it makes it more challenging. As you said, look, any case involving presidents or for current or former presidents of the United States is going to be inherently political. And for the other problem is, as you said, the facts of the Biden administration's, you know, conduct here is actually not clear at all. According to what we've seen, these documents were actually held amongst his personal information, including apparently the funeral arrangements for Bo Biden, the departed son. Oh, wow. But like, why are Ukraine documents commingled with funeral documents regarding the president or the vice president's then departed son? So look, it's a little weird. Um, and also, you know, there is going to be an investigation. The Justice Department has put in charge a Trump appointed uh, U.S. attorney to actually or a Trump appointed special counsel to actually investigate all this. And I think it does push the timeline on any potential action going forward. And it just, just reminds me kind of of a Hillary Clinton case and so much more, which is, you know, the, the lengths to which media went to try and basically whitewash what the Clinton people did while in the State Department was absurd, especially. Well, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I just love the yo-yo. Yeah. yeah, it's too, like where every it's time. Like, where it's like, depends on who is accused of having these classified yes. documents. People determine how they feel about right. like this. Now it's like, ah, this is no big deal. You yeah. know, whereas previously with Trump, this was a grave threat to national security, et cetera, et cetera. So listen, personally, I think it does matter. I think it's important. I think thought Hillary Clinton, like I thought they let her off the hook. I think anyone who, you know, is willy nilly with serious classified documents and especially engaged in a cover up, I think that is incredibly serious. Um, so people need to kind of pick how they feel about this and apply it consistently. Not that I expect that. To I just happen. think we need to end kingly practice where these guys just to hang on apparently to whatever they want. It's like, you're not a king, you served the president, now you're out. Like that doesn't mean that you're entitled to everything that ever happened yes, to you in office. Kind true. of nuts if when you think about it. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.